So welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, we will practically demonstrate to you that how you can calculate the Pearson correlation between the two variables of your data set in R. Right now, we are in our working directory and in our working directory, you can see that we have a one data set clinical underscore data set dot CSV and we are going to utilize this data set. In previous video tutorials, we have explained it to you that how you can set the working directory. So let's load our data set in our current R environment. To load this data set, we are going to create a variable named data. And after it, we are going to write down a one R base function d.csv. After typing the function, now within a parenthesis, we will give a comma inverted commas and within a comma inverted comma, we will write down the name of the file that is holding our data. And the name of the file, as we have told you earlier, is a clinical underscore dataset dot CSV. After typing this, let's run this piece of code. When you will run this piece of code, then look at the environment tab of your R Studio. It is letting you know that how many variables are there and how many observations are there in your data set. Currently, there are the 10 variables and the 100 observations. We hope so that you may know it very well that the variable stands for column and the observation stands for rows. Let's check the structure of this data set once again by using a one R base function str. Let me run this piece of code and look at the console. In the console, you are going to find out the name of all columns or the variables and their respective type and as well as the values which are present in them. Let's assume for a moment that right now you are interested to find out a correlation between the two variables. The one is a systolic blood pressure, another one is a cholesterol. So let's first check out that they are normally distributed or not. To see that they are normally distributed or not, we are going to plot the density plot. In our previous video tutorials, we have explained it to you that how you can check the distribution of your data variables. Right now, we are going to plot the density plot. To plot the density plot, we are going to type the plot and then within a parenthesis, we are going to write down the density. After typing the density, we will write down the name of the variable that is holding our data and the name of the variable is data and then we will give the dollar sign to select the variable in which we are interested. Right now we are interested in systolic blood pressure, so we will select the systolic blood pressure and run this piece of code. When we will run this piece of code, then in a plot section we will have the plot. You can see it here that the systolic blood pressure variable is going to have almost normal distribution. Similarly, let's plot the cholesterol values which are present in our data. As you can see it here that this is a pretty similar code that we have used for the systolic blood pressure. Now let's run it and when we will run it then you can see the density plot of the cholesterol variable that is present in our data set. This is also showing the normal distribution. If both variables are showing the normal distribution it means that we can use them in a Pearson correlation. But wait a moment what about the second assumption that they should have a linear relationship. So let's say that these two variables are going to have the linear relationship or not. To check the linear relationship, we are going to plot the scatter plot. To make the scatter plot, we are going to once again use the plot function and then we are going to type the name of our variables in which we are interested. And as you know that, we are interested in systolic blood pressure and the cholesterol. So let's type their name. After typing the name of that variables, we will come out of the parenthesis and we will run this piece of code by hitting the run button or pressing the control enter. Once we will do that, then we will have the scatter plot in front of us. As you can see it here that this is almost showing the linear relationship. Although that linear relationship is not directly proportional or inversely proportional, but at least it seems to be linear. So our two assumptions are valid now. Our both variables are showing the normal distribution and the relationship between our variables is almost linear. So it means that we can apply the Pearson correlation here. To apply the Pearson correlation, we will type the core function as we have explained earlier and then we will give the parenthesis. Within the parenthesis, first we will type the name of our x variable. 
our x variable is going to be the systolic blood pressure so we will type data which is holding the variable then we will give the dollar sign to select the name of the column or the variable after this we will give a comma and after giving the comma we will once again type the data and after typing the data then we will give a dollar sign to select the second variable or the y variable now we have typed our two variables after typing the two variables now what we will do we will give a comma once again and we will write down the method after typing the method within a comma inverted comma we will write down Pearson as you know it very well that right now we are interested to apply the Pearson correlation after typing this piece of code let's run it and I hope so that you know it very well that how you can run this piece of code by pressing the run button or pressing the control enter key. Once you will do that then look at the console. You will have the correlation values and the correlation values which we are going to have right now is 0 0.0142. This correlation value is close to 0 and it means that there is going to be a very weak relationship between the systolic blood pressure and the cholesterol. In simple words, it means that there is a weak correlation between them. But although it's a weak, but still it's a positive correlation. And one very important thing is here that we should also plot a line on this graph which will show the relationship between these two variables. To draw the line, we will use a one more function named abline. After typing the abline, we will give the parentheses and within the parentheses we will type lm. What does it mean by LM? We will talk about it later on. After typing the LM, now we will give the parentheses once again. And within the parentheses, now first we will type our Y variable. As you know it very well, that our Y variable is a cholesterol in our case. So we will type data and then we will give the dollar sign and select our Y variable, which is a cholesterol. After this, we will give the tilted sign. As you can see it here. After giving the tilted sign, we will give our x variable, which is a systolic blood pressure. So, what we will do? We will type the data and then we will give the dollar sign to select the variable name. After this, we will come out of the parentheses and then we will give a comma and we will type COL. The COL stands for what? The COL stands for the color. After typing the call, we will give the sign of equality and then we will type the comma inverted comma and within comma inverted comma, we will write down the name of the color in which we are interested. Let's see that. Right now we are interested in red. So we will type the red. After typing this piece of code, come out of the parentheses and hit the run button or press the control enter key. And once you will do that, then look at the plot. There is going to be a red line and that red line is letting you know the relationship between these two variables. We hope so that now you will have a good idea that how you can calculate the Pearson correlation between the two continuous numeric variables of your data set. Now please let us know, is this graph pretty? Absolutely not. So in the next video tutorial, we will let you know that how you can make the pretty plots by using a one library that is known as the ggplot. The ggplot is a very famous library of the R to make the beautiful visualizations. So please stay with us to learn that how you can make these type of the visualizations beautiful using the ggplot library.